skin tags, those flesh-colored bumps that you see on the neck, the armpits, the groin, what causes them, how to treat them. In this video, we're gonna be talking about all the different home hacks out there, what we do in the dermatologist's office. I'm Dr. Shaw. I'm Dr. Maxfield. And welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. In this episode, all things related to skin tags, here we go. Here we go. So skin tags, what the heck are they? They're also known as acrocordons. These are these little fleshy growths. They can occur anywhere. Even the eyelids, we see them there all the time. And if you think you're going through this alone, you're not. Trust us, everybody gets them. It's just a part of life. What actually causes skin tags? Three main things I would say. One, you could just be genetically predisposed to these things. But then the other main things that are actually happening in your life, friction. So friction is probably one of the top contributors here. This is anything that's rubbing up against your skin. That's why you commonly see them on the neck. That's due to your necklace. Or due to clothing rubbing up against you. Or in the groin and the armpits where you're getting a lot of friction from movements from skin on skin. So friction number one. And number two, you can also get metabolic syndrome. So metabolic metabolic syndrome, obesity, things that increase that insulin-like growth factor can promote the growth of acrocordons or skin tags. Right, and that's one of the changes you'll see earlier actually is skin tags. This can actually precede some of the other objective changes because insulin is an anabolic hormone, meaning that it helps things grow. And so just being resistant to that, having higher levels of circulating insulin, which is an early on change, can lead to growth of these along with other things. Actually, something that we all see very often, but it's a dark pigmented patches and plaques on the neck, under the arms, called acanthosis nigricans. It probably has the same physiology or at least contributing causes. All right, so now that we know what causes them, let's talk about how to prevent them. Basically, you try to reverse those causes. Since you can't change your genetics, you could try to decrease the friction. This means not wearing high-colored shirts that are rubbing up against you, not wearing ties all the time, not wearing a necklace, wearing looser-fitting clothes in the body. Those lifestyle changes can really help. The other thing that you can do is improve your overall metabolic health. So that means decreasing those insulin levels by decreasing your carbohydrate uh, intake. These can decrease those insulin-like growth factors that are contributing to that. So changing your lifestyle can certainly prevent these. But once they've formed, like I have one right now, even if I improve my metabolic health, it's not going to get rid of the skin tag that's already developed. You'll still have to remove that. It will just prevent future ones from happening. Even that is a big source of frustration because you can do a lot of things right, but you may still have these. And so people naturally are searching all over the internet, all over the library. Nah, I'm just kidding. No one goes to the library. <laughs> but they, uh, everyone's looking for ways to get rid of these, which is reasonable. Um, but let's take a look at some of the home hacks that we see all the time both on social media and from patients in the office. So if you've been on social media as long as I have, you've seen a million hacks out there. And I've even seen like Facebook ads for things like this. One thing that people are doing is they're taking some dental floss. This is like an old trick that people's parents will tell you is tie some dental floss around it and it will fall off. The other one we saw in the intro video, shooting a rubber band at it, which then somehow strangulates the lesion. And then all kinds of topical potions that people are putting on these. So I've seen apple cider vinegar. I've seen high concentrations of salicylic acid. I've seen high concentrations concentrations of tea tree oil and black salve. So I'm gonna break this into two categories for you. We have all of the destructive caustic methods, the salicylic acid, black salve, et cetera, what have you, the apple cider vinegar, my least favorite skin ingredient right now. All of that lives on one side and it has the downside of it can destroy and damage all the surrounding tissue. The scars from that can be very, very untoward, very prominent. We see that in the literature, we see it in real life. But the second arm of it is the string or the rubber band. If you tie it around the stock, it actually really minimally damages the surrounding skin at all. If you're going to do one thing, that would probably be the best option, but there's also the downfall of diagnosis because there are a lot of things that can mimic skin tags, but aren't. Here's the cautionary tale. As dermatologists, we always have to give you the worst case scenarios. Why? Because we see the worst case scenarios. So I'll give you two worst case scenarios. One, if you decide, okay, I wanna tie one of these things off or use one of these rubber band devices, which by the way, if you go back and watch that video, whatever was on there, they glued onto the skin. So that wasn't even a legitimate video. I don't know what that was, but the rubber band technique certainly could work if it was tight enough. Two cautionary tales. One, like Dr. Maxfield said, the diagnostic component is really important. Is what you're removing something you should be removing. So I've seen this a lot of times on the face where people remove some type of mole at home and that mole was actually a skin cancer that should have been diagnosed. Instead of it getting diagnosed, they removed it, it had the roots and then the roots spread elsewhere, right? You wanna make sure if you're gonna remove something that you know exactly what it is before you remove it. So that's cautionary tale number one. Cautionary tale number two, we have to say these disclaimers, is that I have actually seen a patient try to tie something off at home. So they came in, they actually had a keloid on top of the ear from like a, a piercing up here, cartilage piercing. 
big keloid. It was pedunculated, which means that it had a stalk, and then they decided that they would tie it off with some dental floss because they saw that someone do that on social media. They tie it off, guess what? doesn't fall off. But also guess what? The tissue died while still attached to the body. And when you, anytime you have necrotic tissue attached to the body, it's very prone to getting infected. So it ends up getting infected, and then the entire ear also gets infected, and then the entire face also gets infected. And so while she was actually trying to save money, she ended up in the hospital, in the ER, on antibiotics, and still had this necrotic keloid attached to her ear. Then she comes into my office, emergency visit, I end up having to cut off the entire lesion anyway. So ended up costing her probably three or four times what it would have costed her if she would have come in in the first place. Now we know medical care is super expensive. We know accessibility is awful. So we totally, we, we sympathize with this. It's, it's ridiculous the price of medical care but just be cautious you're going to be doing these things at home because we honestly just don't want you all to be harmed believe me we feel you like these things are numerous everybody gets them i understand your frustration it's real there are keloids that may be mistaken for skin tags uh, but there's actually a pretty long list of other things that can look like skin tags yeah so there's a myriad of other things that it can be and we'll show you some images of these so it could be a neurofibroma it could be a cherry angioma it could be a form of skin cancer squamous cell skin cancer a keratoacanthoma a pyogenic granuloma. Ne oh, uh, nevus lipomatosis. Wow. Uh, nevus lipomatosis. Nevus lipomatosis. I had this like down pat. Nevus lipomatosis superficialis. <laughs> it's something I say every day. This is like a giant skin tag. That one's benign. But there's actually an important part here too. Skin tags can be associated with syndromes. And this actually goes back towards the genetic component. So if you have a very young individual, uh, especially like a child who's developing multiple skin tags, especially in unusual areas, that's actually something your dermatologist might pick up on. Because again, there are some syndromes with associated additional whole health things that can present with multiple skin tags early on. So that's just something else to keep an eye on. But that's what we're we're here to think about is like, oh, what else can be going on? That's why we're here. So now that we've done our giant disclaimer, <laughs> Let's talk about how we treat them in the office, which I actually kind of enjoy doing, to be honest. It's kind of like the milia for me, where I get to just remove them and know that they're gone. That makes me really happy. So there are really two main forms of removing them in the office. There's one called cryotherapy, where we use liquid nitrogen to freeze them. Now you can just point the liquid cryo gun at the lesion, shoot it. And now sometimes that causes some injury to the surrounding tissue because normal skin is gonna be affected with that spray, even if you're pretty precise with it. Or like Dr. Patel is doing in this video, you can actually dip the, uh, these little like claw-like things into uh, some liquid nitrogen, get the tips really cold, freeze the lesion, and then it doesn't cause as much damage to the surrounding tissue, but then hopefully when you get home, it falls off. Or you could just simply cut them off. That's what I prefer doing personally, and that's what we're gonna do today to my skin tag. So Dr. Maxfield is gonna be my dermatologist. Yeah, of course, it's gonna be me, so let's do this. So once you have a skin tag removed or any lesion removed in general, you wanna make sure that you're taking care of it. The common thought is that you wanna let these things dry out. You don't wanna let these things dry out. In the healing process, you wanna keep these things moist. So that means using Vaseline on the lesion until it heals. And then if you really wanted to, and if there was any risk of scarring, you could definitely use a scar gel on it with a silicone base. And that could be very helpful for the healing process. Also, anytime you're removing a lesion, especially if it's on the face, you wanna make sure you're wearing sunscreen because during that healing process, you're really prone to hyperpigmentation. So sunscreen is definitely gonna be a must in sun exposed areas. One last thing, we can try to provide you just from our perspective and experience is that when you go in to see a dermatologist about the skin tags, one, just let them know it's important to you. Let them know that that's what you're there for. You want them treated, not just reassured that they're benign. That's actually a really important step. But then the second thing is too, is that it's not covered by insurance. 
And so for most people, your dermatologist is probably going to add or have a cosmetic fee that they'll set up or have a cosmetic visit that they'll set up for you. So I don't want you to feel like, you know, you go in, this is going to be covered. But that's why we talk about the cost. Like this is something that's probably going to be extra. Just have that mindset and expectation. All right. So if you go into the dermatologist's office and they say it's not included, that's like pretty standard because if they try to bill for it, then the insurance will actually usually reject that bill. Sometimes they'll cover it depending on your insurance, but a lot of times it will get rejected. How much is this going to cost you? I've seen cosmetic fees range from if, if it's just one skin tag to like $50 all the way up to $200 if they're removing a bunch of skin tags at the same time. So if you have extensive skin tags, it can cost more certainly, but the range is anywhere from $50 to $200 depending on where you are and how many you're having removed. And that's basically it. So we've walked you through what a skin tag is, ways to take care of it, the better way to have it taken care of. We showed you how to take care of it. One less skin tag is there in the world right now. But again, cautionary tale, I've seen some bad cases, so definitely be careful. We definitely, if you watch our channel, you know we are trying to give you the tools to treat your acne, to treat anything that we can treat at home, we're trying to get you to treat at home. We just don't want there to be bad outcomes. So that's why we, we're so cautious with things like this because it really can end up in a worse situation. But we appreciate you being a part of this. Leave us some comments about what you want us to talk about next. Even if it's something you wonder, your dermatologist would answer that question for you, throw it down there and maybe we can answer it for you. But we appreciate you as always. Thank you all so much. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.